reveal the television event of the 1960s, and I'm delighted to confirm it features no unruly elephants. Sad. Yes, the number one TV event of the decade is England's footballing glory in the 66 World Cup. From the four quarters of the earth they came, pilgrims united in devotion to the world's greatest spot. There were tens of thousands, nay hundreds of thousands of people millions of people wanting to see this match. I got a ticket to go and wow, goodness me, I must have cheered the roof off. There was nothing else on TV and it's hard to convince people of this fact. There were only two TV channels, they were both showing the World Cup final, there was nothing else to see. Talk about event uh, television, you, you got the impression the whole country wasn't hushed, the whole country was shouting. Many, many people who wouldn't have had the slightest interest in football normally um, would have been sat down to uh, to watch us sticking it to the hum. Her Majesty arrives in the Royal Box. Mr. Harold Wilson, the Prime Minister on the extreme left, Lord Howard, the President of the Football Association. We were there. Both Ray and I were there, and uh, I, I, don't, I don't remember that. And Ray, uh, Ray I don't was, remember it was that one time. of the first football matches he'd ever seen. Uh, Charlton, Bobby Charlton, Peters, Styles, and Jackie Charlton bringing up the rear. Are you sure I was there? We were there, he was sitting next to me. England never before have got past the quarter final stage. Oh, I remember sitting next to you, yes, that's right. Yeah, mate, how can, you watch, how can you watch the World Cup final and not remember you were there? But the 1966 World Cup final is underway. Well, even now, there's rivalry between England and Germany. You know, the 66 World Cup final was only 20 years after the war had finished. So you can only imagine the, the intense hatred between the two teams. When you've actually been to war with another nation, when you've, when you've killed them and they've killed you, and now it's like it's football, people want to get involved. Of course, Germany scored first. Hello, a goal! West Germany have scored! Jeff Hurst, who was playing in front of Jimmy Greaves, let's not forget, rose like a salmon and headed the equaliser. And now we're back on script again. Martin Peters goes in and puts England 2-1 ahead. What a chance to go! England are at home and they're going to win the World Cup, aren't they? Aren't they? And it's a free kick to West Germany. With just seconds to go, there's a clash on the edge of the penalty area. Everybody in the stadium, everybody in the country knows what's going to happen next. They're going to equalise. It was incredibly intense, the drama was so intense, you know, going in front, the last minute equaliser, the extra time, the Russian linesman. I doubt that there's ever going to be a more controversial goal. Yes, can he do it? He has done, yes! No, no, the linesman says no. Now when you look at it, it seems like he wasn't over the line, but everybody just ran to the Russian linesman. I don't know what the Russian linesman Topic Bakramov did during the years 1939 to 1945, but I do think that when the referee runs over towards him, four words may have gone through his mind. 20 million dead, goal. It's a goal! It's a goal! England have won the World Cup on the, on the back of a goal that never crossed the line. The Germans hated it. Of course they hated it. We would have hated it. We should be very, very grateful for the equally famous fourth goal that at least took the argument out of it. And here comes Hurst. He's got some Stigler on the pitch. They think it's all over. It is now! At the time, you know, you remember thinking, Jesus, that's a good line. You have an instant emotional response to something that's genuinely original, and, and you almost felt its power coming out of your little 11-inch rented telly. It was a wonderful moment. I can't describe the, the euphoria, the joy we felt when Bobby Moore lifted that cup. The whole country was uplifted. And here's the three gold star, Jeff Hurst. They should have all been knighted. What a day this is! A day none of us privileged to be here will ever forget. It was an incredible moment. It kind of consolidated the sense that there was now a new Britain, a, a sort of, you know, 60s swinging, mini-skirted, goal-scoring Britain.
That was a big contrast from the old Churchillian cigar job that had just scraped it through the wall. The match was broadcast in black and white on BBC and ITV, but this iconic colour footage was shown later in cinemas. My memory of it is still effectively black and white, and although I have seen it in colour since, you do uh, still remember it as a black and white event. It was just one of those events of your life. And of course, it was brought to us by television. So with 